Good afternoon again, this is uh, Dr. Tala and today I'm continuing in talking about platelets. Um, please refer back to the first um, episode that we taped on platelets in sick babies and kind of the whole introduction to platelets. This probably won't make as much sense to you, um, so please go see that one first if you haven't seen it yet. Right now I'm going to be talking about um, what to um, what your differential di diagnosis should be if there are low platelets, again, we said less than 150,000, in a well-appearing newborn. So easily the most common cause of low platelets in a well-appearing newborn, so whatever, the kids in the unit because baby had um, slightly low sugars or something and you end up getting a CBC, but baby's otherwise fine, um, is placental insufficiency which means that for whatever reason, the placenta wasn't big enough to provide the oxygen that the baby needed um, or all the nutrition that the baby needed. So normally this could be either a maternal or a placental reason. So it could be that the mother had high blood pressures during pregnancy, it could be that she had preeclampsia, it could be that a little bit of the placenta just stroked off, so the placenta ends up being much smaller, it could be that for whatever reason the placenta didn't grow adequately, all of those things result in placental insufficiency. And very often, after the OB gets the baby out, you know, the OB will be like, wow, look at this placenta, it's absolutely tiny, and which is actually quite disgusting. Placentas look a lot like livers, but they're just really quite, like a really like veiny, bloody liver. And so the OBs swing this around very casually and they're like, look at the placenta. So we do, and we acknowledge it and say, wow, it's small. In the back of my head, I'm like, oh, the platelets might be low, but also that's disgusting. Those are the two things I'm thinking. So um, placental insufficiency went a bit off track there. So um, all of those things are gonna cause a little bit of hypoxemia. So if you think about it, it's the red blood cells that are gonna carry the oxygen around the body. So logically, if a baby isn't getting enough oxygen through the placenta, the most logical thing for the blood to do would be to make more red blood cells. So very often these babies are born with higher red blood cells because of placental insufficiency and very often lower platelet count, probably because all the energies are putting into making the red blood cells. So that's a very typical CBC in a baby whose mommy had preeclampsia, a hematocrit of like 65 and a platelet count of like 80. So again, first thing in a healthy appearing baby with thrombocytopenia, placental insufficiency. Easily the most common. Second big category is immune. So immune means for whatever reason, the, there have been antibodies that have been made. So antibodies are little proteins that are produced by a body, whether the mummy or the baby, and go and attack the little antigens that are sitting on the platelets. So they attack the antigen sitting on the platelets and cause it to explode. I mean, not explode, you know, like break down. So there are two different types of immune thrombocytopenia. The first one, which they're probably equally common really, is when the mummy has immune thrombocytopenia. For, so for whatever reason, 30-year-old um, mummy has um, a low platelet count and was found, just like many other uh, um, uh, immune diseases, my phone is ringing, just like many other, um, just like many other immune-mediated diseases, um, she just started developing antibodies to her own platelets and literally her antibodies started attacking her own platelets and caused a lower number. Those antibodies can cross the placenta and attack the baby's platelets as well. So for as long as they're floating around in the baby, the baby could end up with low platelet count. So that's when maternal ITP ends up with neonatal thrombocytopenia. So anytime a mummy has low platelets, you have to think, oh, I wonder if this is ITP and go ahead and check the baby's platelet count. The other category of immune thrombocytopenia in a baby is called NATE. Um, or it's, that stands for neonatal alloimmune, alloimmune, that's AI, thrombocytopenia, N-A-I-T. This is a little bit harder to understand and it's similar to kind of like the RH and the ABO incompatibility. It can happen in a first time mommy though. So this would be a case where the mummy's platelets don't have, let's just assume for the purposes of this, the mummy's platelets have no antigens on them. So they're nice round balls of platelets, okay? Whereas the baby's platelets have tiny little antigens on them. In all pregnancies, there's some cross-contamination of blood. A little bit of the fetal blood gets into the mummy's blood, okay? So let's assume those little platelets with the antigens on them get into the mummy's blood. 
the mummy's blood suddenly sees these antigens as an other. It's something that needs to be attacked, right? So the mummy's blood produces antibodies to the baby's antigens, which is fine for the little platelets that are going around the mother's blood. We don't care if she gets rid of those. But unfortunately, those antibodies can then also go back to the baby and start attacking the baby's blood. And in that case, again, those antibodies are gonna last for, as, for however long those antibodies are floating around the, the body. That type of thrombocytopenia can be very profound because if the mother produces a lot of antibodies, they all go through the placenta, they can get rid of a whole bunch of platelets very quickly. So even though the platelets are being made very, very quickly, they the count can still hover in the teens or even less than 10. So. The first big category of placental insufficiency. The second big category is immune, so ITP and NATE. And then the third category, which we are always tested about in boards. And honestly, I mean, I've seen probably one of each of these in my career, um, but I've seen them thousands of times on different exams I've had to do, um, are all the weird inherited syndromes. So the more common syndromes that obviously we see all the time are things like Down syndrome, trisomy 18, trisomy 13, where the platelets can be down a little bit, but then there are the other ones, the ones that we get tested on, like Fanconi syndrome, um, which you can have limb deficits along with thrombocytopenia, TAR, which is thrombocytopenia absent radius, T-A-R, um, which you literally are lacking your radius and you have thrombocytopenia, um, and like Whisker Aldrich, also severe immune deficiency with thrombocytopenia. So again, much, much more rare than the other more common groups of thrombocytopenia in a well newborn, placental insufficiency and immune mediated. Right, so now we know what the differential diagnosis, what do we do about a low platelet count? So obviously if the baby is bleeding, we should give platelets. So unless if the platelet count is low and we can't stop the baby bleeding, whether it's from an umbilical stump, whether it's from um, a cut during the C-section or, or whatever else, then that is a reason why the baby should receive platelets. Other than that, there's been a lot of controversy about exactly what that threshold should be for when we give platelets. Traditionally, I feel like we were all a lot more conservative and we used to give like, if a baby had a platelet count of, especially a preemie baby where you're more worried about a bleed in the head, we would generally give platelets if the platelet count had reached like less than kind of 75,000, maybe 60,000. Um, however, um, a study came out a couple of years ago um, in the New England Journal, a beautifully done study, over 600 kids that compared giving platelets to um, babies if their platelet count was less than 25,000 or less than 50,000. And ironically, the babies that they waited until the platelet count got less than 25,000 and had to give platelets in those cases did a lot better. They had less intracranial hemorrhages and they had less deaths together, the combined uh, number. So now I feel like we are a lot more aggressive in allowing those low platelets to just kind of ride themselves out. So normally we would transfuse platelets for less than kind of 30,000, maybe somewhere between 25 to 30,000, or in a baby that's bleeding or otherwise sick where you just need a reason to give um, a good uh, transfusion. And normally we'd end up giving about 10 mLs per kilo, um, a platelet transfusion over about an hour. Um, and uh, apart from that, um, the most important thing is not just treating it, but making sure that we have a reason for why we know why the baby has low platelets and making sure that we're treating that reason or we're okay for that reason too. So I hope that you learned a lot. Um, please go back and look at the other one if you haven't so that you can put it all together and know everything there is to know about, well, nearly, about platelets in the NICU. Um, if you do have any questions or suggestions, then please comment below. Otherwise, remember to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can learn all about all these interesting topics in the NICU. Thank you.